I am Helena, I'm 23 years old. When I was about 15, I started using Tumblr. I had an eating disorder since I was pretty young. There's a lot of messages that said, if you feel bad about your body, that means you're trans. I was just going through this period of like, I don't like how I'm treated as a cis person. I don't wanna be cis because cis means you're uncool and you're privileged and you're an oppressor and you're bad and I don't wanna be that. In that way, I was really incentivized to try to figure out a way to make my voice heard in these communities. And obviously I can't change my race. I can't really change my sexuality. Um, so the only thing left was to start playing around with the gender stuff. So I decided to call myself a demi girl, which is one of the 40 million genders. And that basically means that I'm mostly a girl, but I'm a little bit not a girl, which is just like, what does that even mean? And then after that, I went to demi boy. And then after that, I went to gender, gender fluid. And after that, I eventually went to trans boy. But all this took like two or three years of just going through this repetitive cycle of changing this identity and changing it again. And it was just never enough. There was a lot of hopelessness for a long time, a lot of regret. The, the feeling of regret was intense. Ah, it's a moving interview, and there's a lot more of it in the episode. Helena joins us on set now. Helena, thanks so much for coming on. There's something so sad about that. First of all, thank you for speaking up, because your voice does matter, I think, in this conversation. But you felt what every young woman I've ever met felt at a certain age, which is uncomfortable with yourself. And it feels like you were exploited at that moment of weakness. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, as you said, it's completely normal for not only young girls, but often young boys too, to feel uncomfortable with themselves, uncomfortable with their body. Um, but we have this ideology that is especially prevalent online that says that if you have those feelings, that means you're trans. I mean, there are literally people who say, if you don't even like your voice on a recording, that's a sign of gender dysphoria and you need to go see a medical professional because you're trans. Talk about taking advantage of people. So how do you, and this is all explained in, in greater depth in the documentary, but how do you feel now at 23 looking back on what happened? I feel um, honestly grateful for the experience because it's taught me a lot about the world and about myself, but I really feel afraid for these other young girls like myself who they might not be. You know, I consider myself lucky that I was able to get out of it unscarred really medically, but there's so many young people who can't say the same um, and psychologically as well. I mean, it's just devastating to, especially from a young age, be lied to by adults at school and by medical professionals and told that your body is wrong you need to change it you need to get hormones you need to get surgeries that's devastating for a young person so i'm just really concerned for younger girls and boys like i once was yes. being led down this path um, and and being hurt by it it's a failure of male leadership of adult leadership and it does seem like some of the steps are medically irreversible absolutely i mean they there's all sorts of you know, the, the White House actually just put out a chart yesterday that says that some of these steps are reversible or partially reversible, but that's such an oversimplification of the truth. I mean, when you go on a cross-sex hormone, like, that's going to give you not just physical changes, but psychological experiences that you can't just act like they never happened. You can't just take it back. Yes. And especially with surgeries, you know, a, a breast implant after a mastectomy is not the same thing as never having your breast taken off in the first place. So there's a lot of young women who are going through that who had a double mastectomy at 16, 17, 18 years old, or even younger, that happens, um, who, you know, there's nothing you can really do to oh. put that, that feeling of, of oneness and safety in your body back. Oh. oh, it's just, it's heartbreaking. I hope people are hearing you with open minds, with tolerance, are they? Um, there's a lot of people out there, especially parents, who are really thankful for what I'm saying because they see that their young girl or their young boy is going through this and the school is telling them, you need to affirm them they're trans, you need to transition them. All their doctors are telling them you need to transition them. And these parents, they know 
that their child should not be having these cosmetic procedures. So there's a lot of parents who are really thankful. There are other young people who are really thankful that I'm saying what I'm saying, but obviously, you know, you have the trans activists and the trans community that exhibits some very uh, unhealthy kind of cult-like dynamics who are really upset about this. Man, you are so articulate and thoughtful at 23. It's Thank just, you. it's remarkable. Thank you. People who have suffered like you have sometimes get deeper. Yeah, you learn a lot. Like I said, I <laughs> learned a lot. <laughs> you Thank you. Thank you for talking to us. Thank I appreciate you. It. You're going to hear her full story and others of people like her who've been through this on Fox Nation in early May. It's one of a bunch of episodes we've been working on. Stay with us for more clips from season two of Tucker Carlson Originals. We'll be right back.